who really can shred through a team as yep. long as you can be safe. Well, it looks like she'll be shredding through everybody until Darshan gets nice and big as <laughs> Aphromoo calls him the Tree of Life. He's back on Maokai this game. Flame will stay with Rumble and a bit of a trade in the jungle this time. Big Smithy does not go on to the Graves, but Rengar will go on to Dardoch. We'll see if he can have the same kind of start in the jungle. It wasn't really that great of a start. It everything went bot lane, I should say. But we'll see if he has a good start to the jungle. Also got Zed coming in here as well as Janna. Some interesting picks and plays. We'll see what happens coming into game two. Immortals looking to keep this series alive against Kinologic Gaming. Tracking the jungler starts is going to be pretty big here. When you have Assassin versus Assassin jungler, we know how snowball this can be. And Immortals looking like uh, they're all heading out to mid lane here. They may want to do some sort of a stack and look if they can catch someone from CLG off guard, uh, pick up an early summoner or perhaps the first blood. But uh, CLG playing line of scrimmage should be okay as long as they don't actually go up uh, and face check that bush. Flame, Ruby Crystal potions, got stick save with those boots for Swifties. Oh, might have some flashes here. Thunderlords being called down everywhere. And it looks like everybody gets out of this one. Some limping away. That was pretty bad for CLG, though. That's flash down, exhaust down already for CLG. Smithy had to flash out of there. Uh, so a couple summoners advantage gained there for mortals, doing a pretty simple stack. They walk straight in. And although CLG was somewhat ready, uh, the amount of damage that these champions from mortals can get down at level one is, is pretty huge. Uh, with the Flame Spitter plus Dardock on this, Rengar being able to do the bush jumps over and over. Nope, Stick says not going to find anything. So they keep CLG, or I say Immortals out. We have switched sides, but they did get a ward in. Mm -hmm. So both teams have a bit more information. Oh, this is cute. We've been seeing a bit more of that from uh, mid laners as well as sometimes Maokai's. This was actually, that's actually a super smart start. So basically how this works is if you are below the level of those little rates, you get bonus XP for killing them. So when you are level one, they are level two, you actually get extra XP for doing that. They put two saplings, they throw the Zed shirt yeah. in, then one W from Kha'Zix instantly kills them off. He can now go Wraiths to red, then as Scuttle spawns, you can take the Scuttle. That gets you level three already, just off those camps. Uh, and you can very quickly do those three camp ganks, including the Scuttle, but a Smithy gonna elect mm -hmm. to skip that Scuttle and just go down to the blue side. He may want to try to go straight for his buffs. Uh, still has the option to go for an early gank though. Seems like there's still some pings. We do always see counter logic gaming, whether it's Darshan even taking hits from the blue buff when he's on blue side. Small things to try and trick other laners. Make sure they what don't have there? the right idea of what's happening. I don't know, he was laughing, so maybe he meant it. Yeah, Darlock actually couldn't <laughs> oh, do his clear. That's that's pretty strange. I mean, either he didn't practice the clear or he messed it up. Um, but level two, gonna have to base off of that. Not really able to get much of a buy. Smithy is gonna get somewhat of an advantage because of this. It's also interesting to look at the, the start for 6A here. He decided to go boots for pot. Um, this has been something that more gen players have been doing. It started in Korea. Oh, we saw Sven do it in EU LCS. And uh, people are doing it. It almost feels to me like it's just kind of one-upping. Mm -hmm. People went long sword three pot. It's like, oh, I need more sustain. All right, my, <laughs> well, my lane's even worse than your lane. So now I'm gonna do boots for pot. And it, it, it is pretty funny, but. Uh, since a lot of Jin players do like to go uh, for early Swifty Boots anyway, yeah, it kind of makes sense, but you have very little combat power. Last hitting is going to be more difficult as right. well. And just recently, Pastry Time speaking with Hermes, standing by about how things went coming into this game. Hey, Riff, thanks very much. I did catch up with Hermes after that draft there. I asked him a little bit about game one, and they have had two solid drafts already. Already, He said that the drafts have gone well, execution wasn't quite there in game one, and they fought a little too hard for some of those objectives. So they had a little chat between the games about when to trade, when to concede, and maybe play a bit more rounded on those objectives because they do want to go in. They were very happy to get Rengar Dardoch excited to bring that pick here into game two. And I asked him about the genre. They said they did practice it a little bit in the instance that a lot of Ole's other supports were banned out. So with the Assassins in the metagame, seems pretty solid. Back to you guys for the call. Thanks a lot, Pastry. That, that's actually pretty insightful. Yeah. You usually don't get that much from the coaches. Uh, so pretty cool to hear about all that. Because of all the practice, Ole, knowing he would be kind of pinpointed. So who won't they ban? Yeah. They might not ban a channel. Let's put that in the mix. So he's been practicing as well.
And so far, they, they have actually been the ones getting pushed in, though, which is kind yeah. of strange. When you pick the Sivir, uh, it is to kind of bully that Jin in lane. That's true. Him in, 32 to 21. Uh, be able to get the CS advantage there mm -hmm. by making him farm under turret. Instead, it's actually CLG shoving in the Immortals bot lane. And definitely not what they were hoping for, but at least for Immortals in the top side, things yeah. are, are going quite well. And, and Flame has to get those kind of edges. So Gotta wonder. Trouble. Ooh, there's the hits. Bola on. He doesn't. Oh, he didn't realize it quick enough. Made the move. Does the Smithy turn around for the fight? He's oh. waiting for the cooldown. He gets out. That's the blue. Not a red buff. That was Ooh. so close. Darlock, it felt like he backed off for a second there. I thought he did as well. It, it kind of seemed like he thought he was actually going to lose the fight. Then he realizes he's winning the fight. He flashes in. Doesn't oh, get the last auto attack. Yeah. So he blows his summoner there. That means Smithy with his flash coming up will have that advantage. And that is key. Uh, that he did not go down because Dardock would be a menace if he got snowballing on this Rengar. And that would have been big because we already saw him kind of get kicked out of the jungle by the mobs. So Dardock, as you said, Hermes saying, feeling very comfortable he got this pick and is trying to force those. Lost fight against the Krugs. Within Lost his own right, the other players. <laughs> coming up quick, or coming up close. Very close. He goes long swords. Good pressure by Cody Sun to get in front of the bubble. Aphromoo tries to get a little aggression under the turret as... They have been missing quite a few minions under yeah. here. They're I wonder how much as well they're trolling each other with Storm Shield when you go to CS. <laughs> oh, Bubbles are in trouble. That's the death mark. Spinning, and he goes down. Told him it would. He is going to get a trade, though, onto to Smithy. And that's the two for one, though. Was that, who got first blood there? Say who actually went assist down first? for the kill. Corky did go down first, so it should be first blood over to Hui. Uh, yeah, and they Corky do get the assist top. hold as well, so that is pretty worthwhile. Right. Who she should be able to get out of here, no problem. But the CS lead in bot lane, honestly, is kind of unacceptable. It really should not be uh, this big. And who he playing this very well, getting six right away. Not sure Smithy so needs going. I guess he did have what to go in for that finish off. But wow, good job by Polter to at least trade a kill back. Yeah, that instant exhaust. So Flame <laughs> doing just that, trying to cut down Darshan to the top side. He's still falling behind a little bit, but we saw the same results uh, from the early game last time. It was Darshan on Nautilus with that early TP. It already happened by now. They were up, like they said, by six minutes, around 2,000 gold. Much more even here as Dardoch has been able to get Nick Smithy's jungle and slow things down. You would expect the Rumble to get an advantage in lane against the Maokai, mm -hmm. even more so than against the Nautilus. Uh, but what Darshan has done here, he has indexed very heavily towards the early game. Triple Doran rings means he can actually spam out the waves pretty heavily. Uh, and with the additional AP, with your sampling plus your Q, you should be able to kill off the back line. So his wave clear is going to be pretty good. And this is going to help to kind of mitigate his disadvantages in the early game. But it is at the cost of slowing down his, his later items build, right? You know, he's not going to get to the things like the Spirit Visage nearly as fast. And he will be a lot squishier because of it if they want to look for, like, for something like a dive. I wonder if Dardok makes this run down. He actually is going to go up for the scuttle. Knows they're trading reds just about. Ole did see it, Smithy, but there's not much that CLG, or I'm sorry, Immortals can do about that right now. Mid lane for Flame. Let's see if they can put some pressure onto Huhi. They're thinking about it. Ole, that is pretty aggressive. <laughs> they could have actually tried to go for something there, but Bobolter was coming down. They decided to make the more risk averse play. Dardock is six now, so we saw Smithy wait a long time to pull the trigger on yeah. his first ultimate last time. Uh, Dardock may want to try to go for something a little bit faster here. Uh, we'll see if he can pull off a successful first gank, as there are some summoners down across the board. You know, he, if he could find Smithy, for example, mm -hmm. uh, he is going to be flashless. I like to see kind of logic gaming wards on both sides, actually, for both teams here, as they know they own either side of the jungle. So we'd definitely like to see something else happening. They're kind of just working with the room they have. Yeah. We have seen that Immortals has been able to say, hey, we realize there's vision down here, but the control wards up top. Definitely give them something. I really like the fact that Immortals, with this lane advantage in topside, and with kind of this early jungle advantage, has been able to uh, actually force the topside control. So triple pink ward up on the top yep. side. You can see the big CS advantage for Dardoch, in part because of this, right? He has been able to take away some extra camps, so he has an XP advantage. He's not up massively in gold, but he has gotten an extra camp here, an extra camp there, and he's been kind of putting out pressure. And the extra part of this that is very important, it's less about the gold lead, it's more about the fact that it unlocks Flame to be super aggressive in lane and try to bully in on Darshan. Because if you're pushing up that far and you don't have topside jungle control, it's a very easy gank to pull off with the Maokai Kha'Zix. It actually might be love for this 
Infernal Drake coming up, Haunting Guys, Sork Boots finished. Flame was cutting down towards the Dragon area, but it seems like he will decide not to for now. Teleport may be up and they can hold off Dragon until that happens. Coming up on 10 minutes. Again, just love for each other's jungles. Xmithy farming his blue side and Immortals red. And vice versa for the other one. Cody Sun, 76 to 90 here is, it actually can't like turn into the lane that he wants now where you just Ricochet and Boomerang Blade it. You got his farm under the turret. Yeah, now that he has a BF sword, uh, that CS lead should not really be extending. As you say, you can just clear it out with right. spells so easily. Uh, and he can look to extend that. Mm, flash forward. Oh, Hobelter. Thinking he had room to play and who he says, let's go any day. Nice play from who to follow up. Onyx Smithy's earlier chunk out there. Full commitment, blows both the summoners, gets the kill, doesn't even need the death mark pop. And 2 0 Zed, who he's off to a good start. He wasn't getting the kills last game, but was, as we heard from the analyst, as can saw, just been putting on so much AoE damage here, taking it upon himself to start. There's the mm. chunk out you were talking about. It's it's the controlling of vision, right? So Smithy kills off the ward, pushes him back, and then Pobelts are thinking he is safe, flash, death Ooh. mark in. The engaged rage is so far from there. And Huey able to pick up a nice, easy kill. Should probably have Ghostblade gold here, I'd imagine, too. Yep, does have it. Nice, quite a few CS from a wave before and just two on that one. Let's see, Pobalter needs to get his vision out. Actually, doesn't have any right now. He's just walking down to the team. Hopefully, they have control over the position. This will be a mortal strike. Yeah. I mean, they have the base timings there, so who he had just blown his ult is both summoners. He based on CLG bot lane, was in base as well. Uh, so they grab that Infernal for themselves. That's pretty big. We'll be able to edge something out. Dardock still waiting for that first ultimate, looking for the right opportunity. CS leads have kind of diminished across the board. Yep. You know, Flame not so much ahead as Darshan is stabilized with the Spectre's Cowl. You know, he gets tankier and tankier. It gets harder to bully him out. And likewise, in the bot lane, we've seen Cody Sun able to edge back into that, uh, that lane. So what's the choice now I mean, against anybody, but also Flames Rumble for Darshan to teleport out? Keeping that lane even, how much does that matter? Or how much do you risk it on a big play teleporting across the map? I think it's all about your risk assessment, right? So if you see the opportunity to get a couple kills, but you're going to lose a wave or two, that's not a big deal, right? Uh, it's how much will you lose? How healthy do you keep this turret? You also have to think, if my, if my turret is it's not going to go down. Yep. But if it's already low and you're going to give up first turret for a couple kills, that's maybe not worth it, right? Uh, so it's all about the risk assessment there from Darshan, seeing what he can do. Uh, he has multiple avenues of success. Right now, he's happy to just farm it out yep. and, and kind of get to that super tank stack. Look for gank assist. He can look for those TPs also. Almost, would you say, beneficial to be reactive to Flame's TP and allow him to try to make the move? That way, you're always keeping the lane. And like you said, farming easy and safe in the top lane. Yeah, I, th I think it can be uh, if you're set up for the proper situation. Right. You know, if you can turn around a TP play by TPing in on them and getting that down. Uh, but with the reactive TPs, it's all to your judgment on A, how fast can I get there? And B, are we going to be able to win if I do get there, right? Because if your team is already chunked out as you TP in, yeah, yeah. sometimes you just donate the summoner spell an additional kill. So. <laughs> As most things in League of Legends are, it's about risk assessment. How quickly can you decide if this is a beneficial play, and then how well can you execute on it once you've decided that it is? Slow things have gone here in this game already. Junglers calming down into their own jungle. Top laners, wet noodle fights in the top side. It's a pool party day. That's all it is. Whee! So. No gold lead for either team. As you said, CS leads diminishing here in Darshan. 13 CS behind still makes him a gigantic tank. It was the moves last time that made looks, CLG look so impressive, but they only made those moves when they were ahead in gold. It's kind of we're looking for these teams is who feels like they can make the move when everything is even. Yeah. Because right now the game just continues to stall out. Both teams seeming pretty confident uh, to be able to just kind of farm it out in their, in their late game ability. This is a double AD carry plus Jana comp, which can make them even stronger, keep them safer in these fights. So that is pretty powerful. One thing that CLG is going to have going for them is their split push. Uh, you certainly can have Zed split pushing in those side lanes. And a key for them to kind of unlock that is to really get one of the first turrets down. If they can actually kill off bot lane turret, if they can make a play, yep. stay with Darshan's bot.
kill off that turret, then rotate your, your bot lane mid, send Huhi to that side lane, and allow him to start really split pushing and putting on pressure. That's what they want to do, uh, but they're a couple steps away from being able to get this play down, and they may be the ones uh, that are getting set up on for a dive, as you can see. A Dardock waiting there at least wants to be in position for a counter gank, if not a play himself. Yeah, this is actually something we didn't see as well too much from McSmithy was the lane ganks. He was always more with the team trying to create the heavy engages for everybody. And here Immortals trying to start something off a little earlier. Looks like CLG has the read. They're staying safe under turret. This is actually where Counter Logic Gaming was able to take Ole down in a oh, similar go. situation. Will they want the same thing? Very nice tidal wave. Dardoch makes it by, though. Alphamu leaves himself in a scary spot. Xmithy has three to engage on. Darshan's Puts here. to the team, and Darshan is on flame right now. They're under the turret. It looks like he can go down. Pole Belter may not have nice enough time equalizer. to help. Turn around from flame in a 3v1, and he goes down valiantly. Who he killed two on the side. In. He took his uh, shadow back. He's down by blue, so he won't keep going, but a three for one as Flame finally got something getting out of that one. They got completely split up Flame. Yeah. Nice play on the side, but Hui kills two people off in a 1v2. Ooh. Now gets out the summoner. We'll escape here. Yeah. We have to see that again. Hui coming up big for the team. That looked like it would be a clean one for one off of a nice equalizer from Flame. And now it's so much more for CLG. This is exactly what we talked about, Riv. They have to unlock the Zed split push by killing off the bot turret. Now you've done just that. And this is a 4-0. <laughs> Zed now. Really good initial disengage from Afro was what kind of delayed this and allowed them to start the turnaround. The Jean ultimate opens up. Darshan TPs in quickly. You can see that they are in full retreat. It looks like it's just going to be a clean kill on Flame. In comes Huhi, hitting them both with the Shuriken, both with that Shadow Slash. Takes out two carries from Immortals, just like that, having a huge game for himself. And who is going to answer him in the side lane? Four and zero. I'm not sure anybody is going to be able to. And Darshan's going to be able to work the other lane by himself. Right now protecting the bottom turret. Here he goes. Who he is going to start controlling one. The fact that he still has a turret up here as well allows him to continuously push real quick. So exactly. it's going to call respect from Flame very often. It's exactly what they want, right? Bot lane goes mid. They hold there. 6A soaks up this farm. Uh, and then you set yourself up in that kind of 1-3-1 one, one type position. Adarshan wants to hold on to that bot lane turret because it did get pretty low. Uh, but there's no one really up here at all to answer Huni yeah. right now. So they are bleeding that farm. Uh, they're trying to trade that off for the Infernal Dragon, though, as you called out. They already have one. Being able to get that second would give them a significant advantage in that regard. So they really want to make this play happen. They're establishing the vision, now looking for the engage. On the hunt, throws it on. Afro who goes down that time didn't have the exhaust or flash. This is Immortals working off knowing those summoners were down last time and they had to put the pedal to the metal. Shots from Stixa in the back and it does not do much to deter Immortals off of Darshan. The Tree of Life is cut down on a second very fast engage from Immortals. That was massive from Immortals. It once the initial play went bad, you have to think that, that CLG should have bailed out. Right, right. Immortals Although they commit to it, they get four. They're going to get the turret, and they will get the Infernal Dragon. And that puts them in the driver's seat here. CLG really throwing away their advantage. Afromu is a goner without his summoners there. As yeah. soon as he got opened up onto, a CLG should have bailed out. This is one of those cases where committing to the fight as a team sometimes can be that wrong call. Oh, how that worked out for Immortals. They had CLG pushing topside. That turret almost went down. That would have been Huhi's, and the dragon pressure worked out in their favor. So, I mean, so with well. this initial play, this is where CLG just needs to be running, right? Instead, they try to make the turnaround, but Smithy's already dead. Six days exhausted. Look how late Darshan is joining in. You know yeah. what is what is he gonna really accomplish in this in this team fight, right? This is a one v four he's going into with Six A ulting in the background. So there was too much of a commitment to the call there. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to see. You know what? The fight's going bad. Bail out. Afro's already down. They should have been able to save some lives. And had only Afro gone down initially, they probably could have held on the turret. Maybe they're even able to contest later at the Dragon, but at least they wouldn't have lost the kills in that turret. And now kind of everything is in the favors of Immortals. Yep. Two Infernals. You have the gold and kills even. You see how much damage the mid laners are putting out Ooh. in this as well. Darshan got to the fight late, so he got to fight everyone by himself. Put out a little bit more DPS on the fight. 
but Immortals now kind of turning it around. Another turret would really mean heaps for this team, being able to sieve a run between either side of the jungle would crush CLG before they can get their lane split back up. And they probably will get another turret relatively soon. The, the bot lane turret for CLG is almost no health left. Mm -hmm. So as, as soon as that does get shoved in, that uh, should be an easy pickup for them. And for CLG, they kind of have to slow it down a little bit again, get back to the side waves. It's very hard uh, for Zed to be successful in those 5v5 teams unless it is kind of going well your way, right? right? This is not like a 4 0 Cassiopeia that's kind of attacking safely from the background. You need you to make to sure cooldowns have been spent. Mm -hmm. You're going in at the right time. We saw what happened if everybody just fights on top of each other. Yep. Mountain Drake up next. That would be huge for Immortals, especially with Pole Belts are being able to just take turrets down so fast. And, and if Cody Sun can approach them. Look at all their damage. When you have a no tank composition and John to shield you yeah. up, you kill Baron off so fast already uh, with the double Infernal. You add in a Mountain. You add in the massive amount of DPS these guys have. And the Baron Rush becomes a very legitimate threat. So that's something they certainly can look to do. <laughs> it's like a half, not half three items. Almost has the Landry's finish, but Zanya's. Sub-20 here, along with his boots and haunting guys. Flame feeling pretty good. I think it's a smart pickup against all the damage mm -hmm. essentially being physical uh, from CLG. You know, the Zed, the Kha'Zix, and that Jin all going to be doing a lot yeah. of physical damage to him and allows them to play more aggressive. It's already a good core item for Rumble. Quick. Tidal wave out. Dardock gets shut down. Actually, he's getting crowd control locked up consistently here. Finally gets out. Hoogie is on to Ale. Dark Ole goes down. In. Here comes Darshan in. Nice last shot onto Flame. Will it be a re-engage? Who he throws down the Yomus. Looking for a shadow forward, but it's just to push the team off. So Ole's the only one going down. Both summoners and Monsoon used to help the team. And Darshan did not have his flash there, so couldn't go for the hard engage. Ole does go down, but it was not for nothing, right? He saves yeah. his team uh, in the effort there. And CLG want to get more. They want to push the advantage because they still have their full HP tank. They can very easily threaten the dive. They will pick up this turret here and start to battle back. But look at the equalizer and the turrets on Huhi. He may just die to the turret. And one more shot. Oh, the harpoon just misses. Flame flashes they forward. The He's in one the fight. Sonya is on. Marshawn is trying to swing. <laughs> he can't get it down. The tree does not have that much damage when no minis are there. And the uh, turret a little bit stronger. CLG really lost focus there. No one autoing the one hit turret. <laughs> oh, well, their mid laner takes about four shots. Then there's extra shots. Oh, a little bit of a lost focus there. They still get the turret. It's a trade of kills. Works out in their favor. Uh, but let's see it again. A little bit sloppier. Let's see this like. dance. So look at this. The shuriken hits Cody Sun, but he's in aggro from the turret. Equalizer gets dropped down. Look at all the turret shots going on to him. Just barely survives, but the turret is now shooting off the other opponents. It's still hitting them. It takes them so long to finally do that last bit of damage. I mean, that was an auto from anyone. Would have saved them about five or six turret shots, it feels like. Uh, it's the thought that counts, right? <laughs> no, Riv! Uh, so, Sticks A having another good game. 2 0 4, but the kills aren't coming as quick, and he's kind of just leveling damage right now. Dustbringer onto him, coming to this with his Yomus. Yeah, that Dust Blade, he has an extra serrated jerk, so he's working towards his third lethality item. And the fact that there is no one with a lot of armor, sure there is his Zonia's, uh, but that's not really going to save you against the lethality from Jin. And so those ultimates become extremely frightening if you to block out the damage with the shields, right? Because yeah. if these ultimates are actually hitting players, no one can, can mitigate it. You don't have the Rek'Sai or the Maokai or whoever to just stand in front of it and soak it up. It's about the shielding and the mitigation through that. Clearing things up in the mid lane. They have actually stopped the mortals from getting too many forward wards. But that may just mean Immortals has been back and buying. You can see a few of the sweets here to let them know. Things are clear up to the river. We'll see what work they can get done from here on out. 24 minutes into this one. Looks like things are just kind of evening out. CLG lost that side split push they would have had just a bit ago. And Immortals is looking for another fight here. Coming from Dardock if they can find it. Cody said to grab himself a shiv, which is kind of... Itemizing even more towards the wave flare, which is already a strength of Sivir. Most people do go PD uh, because it's a little bit cheaper. You get the extra attack speed. So people feel like that yep. is kind of worthwhile. 
Uh, whereas he's saying, you know what, I want even more wave flare. I want this little bit extra burst damage as well. Maybe he doesn't feel like he needs the defensive passive from the PD because he has a protection of the Janna. So it's interesting to see the little choices, little adaptations there uh, from these players. And once he hits that I the third item, the Infinity Edge, that's really where his, his bounce is turned on and he he's able to kind of come through a lot of the fights. Seems like they're trying to yo-yo the offensive CLG here. Mountain Drake just spawned. Great timing for Pobalter to take down top turret, but he's hesitated on pushing the wave, so CLG is kind of worried about it, but not really. So they're going to actually go ahead and see if they can taunt out Dragon. A little miscommunication, possibly. They're ready for the fight more than they're ready to take Dragon, that's for sure. Yeah, CLG is not really prioritizing it. Uh, they're trying to get a pick. Yep. There's one hit. Ooh, he's so close. Edge of Knights, both get hit by Howling Gale, so they are off and a oh. little stop. Oleg getting popped immediately. He tried to throw on the ultimate, it just fizzled out right away. <laughs> I mean, he did a good job at absorbing those initial shots. We'll see if anyone can get over here to pick up Dardock. Has no flash, should be able to walk it out. Oh no, they're Unlock going for up. it. Smithy's gonna have it. There's the lockdown, another good kill. The Perseverance pays off on the chase and two members of Immortals are down after a big lull in the game. It just comes that CLG worked through the mid lane and we're able to spread Immortals thin on the top push from Pole Belter. Packages in just to deter Hoovy here. Rumble TPing in, has Equalizer. This is very dangerous for CLG to get trapped in the pit against the Equalizer. He laid it up the Baron pit. They're gonna be able to come back down. He gets exhausted, bubbled up. Can't get the flame spreader out just in time, so they're able to deliver the damage. Odysun coming Cody's from behind. Now here comes the Ricochets, tries to bounce around, takes an immediate hit and goes down. He put himself in the middle of the fight instead of taking the outside members. Flame doing what he can, Zanias is down, and Darshan's gonna be the last few attacks. No, a good flash out, and Storm Shield from Ole to get out of that. What a scrappy fight. Very scrappy fight, Immortals. Do stop them from taking the Baron, and that is key. And, and as you said, you know, the, this Equalizer here was not inside the pit. He wants to put it on the outside of the pit, trying to focus onto Aphromoo, 6 eight, and who you are in the back. So pretty good Equalizer yep. there uh, from him. But Aphromoo's healing, plus the Summoner heal, Plus, he's able to use uh, the Redemption as well. It gives him so much additional tankiness, and Cody Sun, thinking he would be able to quickly pick those guys off, is Ooh. not able to do just that. It does turn into a very long, scrappy fight. Eventually, CLG coming out a bit on top, but it's Immortals picking up another Dragon. So they're the getting the objectives here, and if they can actually turn that into a Baron, that would be master for them. But even if not, Double Infernal on the full damage teams are even more effective, right? This is not a Maokai who's not getting much out of it. It's a Rumble who gets all the effectiveness from the AP. There's a huge amount of AD being built on the Rengar, who also gets more from his path. Once he gets kills on all the people, you get more and more AD from that, which then gets increased again by the Infernal. So they get a lot more out of this than most compositions. Immortals looking much nicer here in game two. Much more confident after whatever they have discussed between the games here. Counter Logic Gaming falling a bit behind, but still have the members to carry. Who he 7, 2, and 1 in a 2, 0, 7. Stick say, that's who he said before, we're trying to focus on what we do instead of what other teams are doing. Seemed to help in game one. But Immortals under the skin of CLG here in game two, and CLG has to react to what Immortals is gonna be doing. Yeah, CLG will certainly have their opportunities. They're trying to set up actually someone to come respond. So as Flame comes and responds, who he will look for the dive, uh, but the safe play made from Flame there, just throws down the Equalizer, doesn't even show, because he knows that Zed is missing. So very <laughs> smart play from Flame here. Void Staff on him as well, yeah. most recently. You can see how chaotic it is when 6A does open up with the ultimate though. Uh, even through Janna Shields, they're able to get a lot of damage down on Olay last time. And it's kind of just like, oh, who's gonna block it? I don't want to block it, you. <laughs> like everyone just starts scattering. <laughs> Not enough. Maybe once he has a locket or something, but he's not even building one. Yeah, you don't even need one. Unless you got magic shurikens, magic missiles. But not this time, unfortunately. 12 to 9 here. We're just coming up on 30 minutes. As you've been watching Flame's inventory just glow, grow exponentially here in items, it's crazy to have right now. If he can lay down an equalizer, he will completely shred CLG as we have seen. And even more so now. Oh, yeah. That Infinity Edge is finished up for Pole Buffer as well, so. Maybe tricking other people if they go to an engage. Yeah, with his IE finish, once Cody Sun hits yeah. with his, uh, their team fight damage is going to be absurd. It's just a matter of them not getting picked off and dying too quickly, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you can actually stay alive, keep 
Pobelter and Cozy Sun on the AD carry is safe and pumping out damage, they will have a very good chance in the team fights. Uh, but if CLG has their way, they're going to look for a powerful initiation you know, with the Jin ultimate, with Darshan flanking in, and try to make these guys scatter so that they can actually set up their battle lines and have a proper team fight. Winion's in the bot lane for Immortals. They're able to drop a turret, so the outer three here are down for Counter Logic Gaming as they return the favor right away on the top side. A little more fun for Dardock now as he can start getting inside the jungle, maybe with a few members of the team. Get these engages. So far, they've actually been waiting for Counter Logic Gaming to really make their own moves and then say, all right, we'll equalize with that objective or make sure you can't get out of doing Dragon. Yeah. And then fight it from there. And, and being reactive can work. Uh, but I do prefer teams being proactive because you're the ones actually setting the pace of the game, right? Mm -hmm. You're choosing all the fights. And that can give you not only an edge as far as the actual execution of the team fights because you're more prepared for it, but it can give you a mental edge. Because feeling like you're always reacting uh, can end up feeling like you're one step behind. And, mm -hmm. and Dardock, you know, as, as a jungler, is someone who's normally dominating it. And this series, he has kind of been one step behind, it's felt like. He hasn't been able to get as much done on the Graves. And now his Rengar performance, uh, while he, he has not looked bad, yeah. he's certainly not taking over this game by any means, as, as many people might have expected him to on a champion like Rengar. Very true. He's actually seemed to be prioritized quite a bit between both of these teams, but fallen lackluster in the play from both junglers. Still, got to pick up the Rengar. So much potential you can have. He's looking. It's basically what who he could be doing right here. Package forward, flash. Oh, no. oh ho, ho. slowed. So his flash didn't cut him to the right side of the structure. Yeah, so what he was trying to do there was force uh, the, the package to be used before he used his death mark and then use the flash death mark right. to close the gap and get the kill. Unfortunately, he gets tagged by that huge slow. <laughs> Ends up wasting both his summoners, doesn't get anything. Pobelter does not even blow a summoner there, so that's a big advantage for Immortal. Mm -hmm. If they have to go into a team fight, who he is going to be significantly weaker. So now uh, CLG kind of wants to slow it down again, get him into those side lanes. And Immortals, you have to think, is going to be looking for a fight. They would love to find that on Aphromoo, but knowing all of his summoners and alt is up makes that much more difficult. So Flame adding pressure back to the side lanes, and who he's going to try to answer here in the top side. Go back to mirroring each other, but who does it better? That's what they say. I can do anything that you can do better. We'll see who can prove that here. You have to think that even if he landed the death mark, both are still with exhaust and flash. Probably would have been fine, but they're looking again. Olay's caught. Monsoon out. Tries to push off the members. Dardock stays for meat wall. Tied a wave on the backside. Ole staying alive. It's going to be McSmitty that goes down first. Pole Belter is the next to drop in this fight. Somehow Aphromoo keeps himself alive. Darshan cannot get any assistance from the team as Immortals backed up very quick on that one to make sure CLG's initiators were in a bad spot. As CLG looked for the engage there, could have gone so much worse for them. As Aphromoo got out with a couple health and it's <laughs> still a one for two in Immortals' favor. Well, how good is that? We were just saying, if Aphromoo doesn't have those summoners, that's when Dardock goes in. Nami's down immediately oh, as I give Dardock the caster curse and who he takes him out immediately. 50 seconds on these timers here. So one of these big fights and you're inside your opponent's base. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. That's who he's going <laughs> to head back to base there, making a nice play. And CLG opens up. Ole here is... The key is that he's able to survive long enough. Yeah. Yes, he may die, but look how much they're committing. They're already taking so much damage. Smithy is actually flashing into the turret to try to finish off a low HP support. You cannot win the ensuing team fight yep. if you play it like that. There's way too much commitment to kill off the Janna, who is not the big source of damage. So yeah. CLG committing too much, not able to kill that target. You could tell they thought they were going to be able to burst it down really fast. Seems like both teams have that idea. It's either Ole or Aphromoo. Like I said, one of them's going to be doing it better. <laughs> the Immortals now finally getting themselves up past that river, able to get some forward wardage and maybe catch CLG off guard even more. This is where Flame becomes very powerful. Now he gets to play within the chokes of the jungle, and Rumble can just have a field day. Certainly can. It looks like he wants to build towards a Rhylize, uh, so not mm -hmm. electing to go straight for a Death Cap or something. He's going to a little bit more HP, have those slows. And Immortals starting up this Baron. We'll see if CLG can react. The Baron looks like it might just be dead. All right, going for the steal. Smitty, he, it. he steals it, and he goes down. He throws no care to going down, but he gets what his team needs. This is huge for Huki as well. He will demand much more respect in the side lanes, but the rest of CLG has to play careful now. 
so they don't get taken out. Waiting for a smithy. After that, they can go. You gotta shake your head at this one. I mean, Immortals feels like they're playing a good game, Isn't and then it just feels like you get to the stage and you're like, I don't know what to do. Guess we'll do Baron. What a good play from Stixa to Smithy there. First shot, Smite. They were controlling their own burst damage with one member in the pit. Yep. Great job by Smithy. I mean, nails the play, keeps them in it. Had Immortals been able to get that, that Baron, obviously would have gone very well for them. But these are these 50-50 plays that are super risky to do. And a lot of the lower tier teams seem to rely upon them. When, when they get to the stage, you're 34 main game. It's pretty even. Well, how do we win? Well, I guess we do Baron, right? And if you have not taken the proper steps, if you've not picked someone off or yep. gotten full vision control, you can't actually go for those sorts of plays without the risk of being punished. And I mean, that was the first time in a long time Immortals had been able to put wards past the river, and they said, oh, nobody's there? That's Baron time. That's scary time. That's not when you do Baron. Yep. So they uh, figured out scary time has some end results that are bad, <laughs> and uh, we'll think twice as they choose their own adventure next time. Who he wants this. No package, only a short drop on that one. Deathmark's gonna pop, one last hit. And he does not look at the explosion. And Pobelter didn't even bother using the exhaust there. I'm not sure if he thought he was dead anyway or just decided not to do it, but uh, Hui picks up a nice kill there. And this can unlock them, but they're looking for the counter gate. Jarna coming with y'all. Hui hit, they look for Aphromu, split each other as there's a shadow over the wall to be had. Sterix gauge goes off. Ultimate from Stixe. Ale stopped down. Curtain Call is going to hit their exit away, and Darshan is that exit path right now. They're all going topside, but Ole's in the back. He can't give Tailwind movement speed to the team. So oh, the Equalizer is huge! Aphromoo's the only one on it. Xmithy and the rest have to back off. Redemption comes down. Now they can follow Dar Darshan back into the fight. A 3v1 extended for him. Soaking up damage with Vengeful Maelstrom on. He's even got a GA if he goes down once. That's a twisted advance forward. Xmithy's going to claw another one down. On Immortals by CLG. Immortals cannot deal with the Tree of Life as Stixay able to hang around, find his moment, go in, and take out the carries. And CLG will continue to push your package up for Pobelter. Oh, that's risky to try to defend, though. Does he lose it once he gets it? Xmithy drawing his fire. Darshan, he wants that. He is not going to get it, though. Looking for the Twisted Advance immediately. The team will back out. And another strong pressure by Chronologic Gaming. They have been waiting and waiting. The Baron steal in their favor, and they use it immediately. And this is the immediate re-engage with the ultimate down for Huhi. Uh, they try to blast coming over. They're not quite able to do it, and they are yeah. able to get the pick off on him. But now comes the turnaround. 6 a with a great ultimate in, kind of creating chaos, right? And this is what it's about. Create chaos in the Immortals team. Their only consistent right. damage threat that they really had to worry about at this point uh, was the Rumble ultimate. That is now down. They have survived it. They're able to heal back up and then Cody Sun, right? So Cody Sun is doing some work here, but once he gets Twisted Advance on, 6A flashes forward, he's able to take him down. So it was good patience yeah. from CLG to wait till they found the right target. They didn't commit to the fight until the Equalizer was gone. Then the AD carry gets caught, they take him out. Good job. Also just getting Flame outside the jungle. He's been hitting great Equalizers, but CLG has been also getting off them very quick or separating as well. Yeah, Flame deserves some credit. He has actually played this game very, very well. Yeah. His scoreline is not telling the story. That Baron fight, he played it exceptionally well, nailing the Equalizer, even getting out. Mm -hmm. This was another great Equalizer. He has been on point, but uh, they just have not been able to get the follow through to actually win these fights. That said, it's it's a very still. They are a little bit in the lead, but this gold lead is not a big deal. And there's an extra Infernal on Immortal's side. There's really powerful AD carries for Immortals as well. I mean, Cobalt are even picking up a GA because he's finding... It really hard to actually survive against Zed, but with these extra items, if these AD carries both stay alive in any team fight, CLG will start to get wiped, and it's going to get tougher and tougher to take them down as yep. they scale up more and more. Those three Drakes as well for Immortal. We have to realize one minute on Elder would make them ridiculously strong. They staved off the Baron pretty well. There was obviously a fight in the mid lane. You lose members, but if you keep the turrets up during the Baron, it's much, much more of a save, and they did that, just losing the top second tier. Much more to work with this time here as we go into a second fight. And they move up mid lane pretty confidently. They are surrounded by wards, so they need to be careful. Yeah, they really do. Darshan still has his TP, and they know that Huhi is always going to be lurking. You can see how scared Pobelter is playing this, even backed by his own turret mm -hmm. with a GA and summoners available. He has to respect the damage coming out of Huhi. You know, Black Cleavers also have been picked up for both 
who he and Smithy, which is going to help their essentially all physical damage comp, right? Yep. You can shred out that armor and get even more damage down. And it looks like CLG is just going to rush this Elder because there's no vision around the side of the map. Nope, they have Huhi in the bot lane as well. Now they see it. Will Darduk over the steal. You have to think so. Halfway down. They're onto Ole. They're making him think twice if Huhi can be a distraction here. He also pulls the exhaust. Flashes out. Darshan's Dar Dar on the back. What's his target? He's locked down for now. That is going to be Elder just on the one Inferno, but it means over the wall. save it from Immortals and they continue to engage. After Room behind the team, giving heals and giving speed. It's Smithy going for the front side just to slow him down more, which cost him his life. And a huge last shot coming in from Stixe. Is there a deadly flourish oh, to follow? The over to Xmoho. Oh. Cobalts are almost going down. I thought Ex Smithy was going to make it over for more spikes, but he does not. All the summoners and everything used. Pobelter has flash, makes it out alive, but he's going to have to watch most of his base go down. Yeah, he certainly is. They're going to lose that mid inhibitor for sure. The question is how much more will CLG go for their side lanes? Pushed, and it would be pretty risky to try to go for an end, but there is a lot of time on the Death Timers for Cody Sun and Flame. It so was... they could decide to make the call and just go straight for an end. We're at about 55, 60 seconds on those Death Timers. They're looking. It's going to be very reminiscent of the other game. Immortals members spawning as CLG gets on the Nexus. We're no much later, mates, though. though. There's no more mates. I think they have to back off. They may have overstayed. Yep. That's already the GA proc. These guys are getting low. Dardock is back up, and he has the ultimate. He's looking. Darshan could be that hit. One on. He doesn't want to get turned down by the team. They are so reluctant to actually do this. There's the ultimate. A few more hits. They know they can take a tidal wave being held by Aphromu. Now on to Smithy. He jumps away. Dardock fearing what he may have gotten himself into does get out of that one alive, but he was patiently waiting for exactly that reason. Is They could almost turn and kill him. Yeah, and this is why those plays are so risky. CLG overstays. Not only do they almost go down, this means Immortals can start up the Baron with CLG at very low HP. So CLG may be punished much more from this, but we'll see. Oh, he burns him down! Flay with a huge play! There's no chance for the outsmite! And now Immortals! Stave off the Baron coming in from Counter Logic Gaming, lose a few members, but come out of this one on top. Yeah, CLG got way too greedy there. Uh, their eyes got big. They thought they could maybe end, but they didn't have Baron minions. So as the minions actually do get cleared out, that play had to end. And here it is once again. This is the play that started all. Very nice zoning from Huhi and Darshan. Finish off the support. They're giving time uh, to Smithy and 6A to actually get the Elder. Then once you have the Elder Dragon Burn, it's full-on attack. You can pile in, you can chase them down. Another Ooh. great equalizer, honestly, here from Flame. But it's not enough to really keep them safe with that true damage burn, the extra stats. It was always going to be too much from CLG. Oh, boy. Ouch. Look at that last grenade bounce. Ouch. Either way, this is, this is still a very even game. I mean, what CLG should have done is back off, reset, go to Baron, Make them fight you at Baron with Elder, which should have meant Baron for CLG. Instead, right. uh, because of that greed, Pushing they get their punished. Luck. And Immortals has Baron, and this is still anyone's game. I mean, it feels like it is going in CLG's favor, but Immortals have one good fight with Baron buff. This late in the game, you can simply end. The rest of the game doesn't have to really come into play. I mean, this is a six-item Sivir now, right? This is this guy is massive. And once the Void Staff is completed on Pobelter, that's two six-item AD carries protected by Ajana. Bed up as well. They can kite this team out if they do need to. Darshan's been having to be that initiator here. Aphromoo's been disengaging with the tidal waves more or not than engaging. Yeah. And now Immortals will set up over it. Baron start to set up their little bit of safety net as they do not see these control wars. They're actually not actually going to head into the Baron pit. You can see Olay's actually building towards the Zonias as well because Huhi has been kind of picking him off in the fights. They know they can't allow this high CDR Jauna to just constantly spam out shields. It'll be too much damage for them to actually punch through consistently with the Assassins. So they have to take out this Jauna. Uh, and if Jauna survives, the team fight certainly could look bad for CLG. I like the build Olay's going too. He's going to fake out Huhi. He's like, you didn't see me build this Zonias? <laughs> yeah, I have a Zonias. <laughs> Saves the team. Aphromu with a Mikhail's Redemption locket to keep himself and the teammates alive. Support's going full support mode now. You get to play little active mini games in these fights. Yep. They really are. And you know, Darshan is going to have to be kind of pretty scared at this point. When the penetration items start to come in, uh, you are not nearly as tanky, but they're opening up. Darshan coming in for a flank. They What's want the this fight. Cody Sun, we're looking. Cody Sun, spell shield out. He has the patience and time to move. 
Shield onto Dardock was the Storm Shield from Janna. We're watching the target. Who he back now? Damage onto Flame is he Zanya's. CLG and Immortals scrapping with the same amount of HP now, just about. Stixay on the backside healthier, as well as Darshan. You're not really looking at a tank on Immortal's side, so they have to be in with kills or in and out. That spell shield from Cody Sun is really the key to the fight. Stopping the Twisted Advance doesn't get locked down, allows him to put out that damage and put yep. Darshan in full retreat. So very close team fight once again. No one goes down, though, uh, thanks to some good play from Cody Sun. <laughs> Baron pressure, buff. pressure clear in the mid lane. Yeah, the Baron buff is gonna expire, <laughs> and then they never will be down still for a little bit after that. Um, and CLG will have to try to get something going in, in the side lanes. And Void Staff now is completed for Bobalta, so both of the AD carries will be able to punch through Darshan on this Maokai. This means you gotta be even better with the wards as late game goes on. You have no room for those. So track the spell shield right there. Immune to CC. Not able to get that out. Darshan knows he has to back off right off the bat. The equalizer splits up the team. Great redemption coming in from Aphromu. Does heal them up and allow them to have confidence to kind of re-engage. Uh, but they can't fully chase in uh, through all the damage. Although Cody said the rest of the team was chunked out. Uh, they can't finish them off. And we're now getting to the point where people are starting to sell off items. I mean, this is getting to like the 100% crit rate where <laughs> Cody Sun has his PD. So he's sitting on 80% crit already just with his items and is going to be an absolute monster if left alone whatsoever. So he has to be the focus of the team fight for both teams. For Immortals, it's about keeping him alive. For CLG, it's about picking him off or zoning him out with Darshan. So there's about 470 AD with that shield on right now from Ole. Plus 80% crit, plus the crit multiplier, <laughs> and a ton of attack speed. Yeah. This guy is going to be shredding you. Dang. If he can stay alive, the spell shield before, mm -hmm. kind of telling us that Cody Sun still has that mentality to play in the strenuous late game. 46 minutes in. Any fight here means enemy in the base and basically your nexus. And a big thing to track for CLG is the fact that they have triple GA, right? There's only the one on their opponent's side yeah. right now. So if you commit to an all-in fight, you have all these guys that have extra lives. You essentially have an eight-life fight where Immortals only has the one extra uh, from Poe Belter. So mm -hmm. that is something when it comes down to the super late game that becomes very, very important. You can see the Zeeks built up by Aphromoo. That's locked onto Stix A for right now, giving him a little bit more of those crit stats. 13 to 1500 there. You don't want to be feeling that if you're somebody on Immortals. No, not at all. I mean, that fourth shot from Jin, get as strong as you like on Cody Sun, but if you're at like half HP and he fourth shot <laughs> you, you probably will just die from half health. So it's definitely. Very dangerous. The game is balanced on a knife's edge. CLG wants to push in, reclaim the inhibitor, and get back map control. Stick Will Immortals engage? Stick stays focused. Those are his three shots onto the inhibitor. Three shots. Let's see if it can get in for more. Alpha Moo ready with Tidal Wave. Eyes on Huki, eyes on Xmithy. Darshan's going to be flashing in, so we'll be able to catch him if he goes for an engage. A crit 800 on Dardock. That was not a fourth shot. Uh, just a regular auto. Mm -hmm. and that sends Dardock right back to the well. He's got to heal back up. And Stick State looking to get some damage down. Threatening with the fourth shot here. Holding that. Making it look good. Very tense. Another one just fires it off. Almost gets Pole Belter in range. They also have to be worried on the side of CLG. The GAs that are hanging out. They can't just commit on Immortals, but Immortals now have to think. They have a lot of things on their plate as mid lane starts to push in. Top lane almost being ready to push in here yeah. inside of CLG. The bot lane is big, so they're gonna engage. Here it comes. Straight across, Darshan has to walk. He flashes over the Equalizer. Nice shot by Flame to get that out, but didn't catch too many members. Redemption comes back. A little bit of heal. Nicely done by Aphromu and communication from CLG, but Immortals is still ready. Immortals has to take this or they lose more turrets. Just like second tier in the bot lane. CLG knows they have the upper hand now. Darshan's looking back into this one. Yeah, CLG can just delay them. They don't actually need to commit to the fight. They get the bot lane turret off of their big minion wave. And now they can threaten the Baron. Ooh. Because if, it's, if the minion wave in the bot lane does not get answered, it could threaten the inhibitor turret. Oh, but Darshan's TPing in from behind. They're going to look for the fight. Comes into the mid lane. That means they can see him off the minions. Dardox first. Bubble twisted advance. Gets the EAs there. So they've committed quite a bit to not get it. All lay able to flash up top. 
flame is stuck. His equalizer is down, so this is a They're perfect fight for the CLG in the jungle. Dardox down. He's going to come back up. Cody Sun doing what he can with Exhaust on, trying to put on more damage. He's going to get Darshan. Darshan down, but we're going to see now Huhi come back up. GA, Huhi down. And it's Smithies now. His GA, Immortals, has basically fought CLG twice. And one just now. They're going to get Xmithy out of this one. But what can Immortals clean up here? Because all of their lanes are pushed. Yeah, and just carried that fight. He flashed in onto Stixe. Took Stixe out immediately. With the AD carry down, that was the consistent damage gone for CLG. And they are under threat of losing a lot. They potentially could just lose the game here. We'll see if Immortals can actually push in and go for the end. They're going to want to with long res timers and only a jungle and support to defend. I don't know if CLG can hold this push off. I don't know. They have Mountain Infernals. As soon as I get to these turrets, you see how fast they drop. And those as well. Shots coming from the Triforce of Pole Belter. With the rest of the team behind them. They're looking for a kill. Like Smithy's trying to be a deterrent here. Aphromoo with the bubbles. The Cody Sun would be the perfect one to head out. Aphromoo saying, follow me. Uses all his actives to try and save it. Cody Sun would be the one to get here. He is a lot of the damage. Pole Belter as well. Seconds on Seven six seconds on Stixay six now. Nexus is open. We're going to game three, 25 to 18. Immortals keep this one in their control for the victory. Wow. You can see Cody Sun so happy with that. He carried that last team fight. Struggled to really get involved in, as he was zoned down in so many of the previous team fights. Then he finally gets his opportunity. He's able to delete Stixe. And Stixe's first death of the game ends up being the only one that matters, as that is CLG's loss. It all came down to the one fight. Both teams playing reactively off each other the whole time. Baron steals. Baron plays. As well as Immortals holding on very tight to stave off that Baron, make sure they can stave off as well as an Elder Drake, and then get themselves back into the game. Fantastically played who he 11, 4, and 3 on Zed but they were able to figure him out, shut him down. And it's really just tough to actually get involved with the Zed in, in these big 5v5 team fights with double exhaust, all the shields, the locket that we talked about. You know, it does come into, into play in these late game stages, and it became very difficult for him to kind of utilize that gold lead, plus everyone caught up to him in itemization. And, you know, in that late game stage, taking down the AD carry meant victory for Immortals. They were able to do it, and with 6A going down, there was not much hope uh, for CLG in the rest of the fight. So you see kind of what Immortals prioritizes here as well. They say, all right, we're going to throw the Sivir in. We're going to put a bot lane in that really isn't utilized too much right now. We've seen more Sivir. We haven't really seen the Janna, but we did hear it from Hermes, uh, from Pastry Time's interview, that Ole is looking to expand more. He realized he's getting hit, and he felt like, I wouldn't say felt like he was part of kind of the losses of the team, but knew he could do more. Yeah, and I think the Janna was actually quite effective. Yeah. Uh, while he did get targeted in a number of the team fights, got taken out by some Zedals and, and things like that. If you're absorbing as much pressure as he did in a number of the fights and delaying your death long enough, yeah. uh, that is kind of the key to their victory in many of the team fights. The mid lane overextension, uh, the team fight at the end there, fourth shot used on him, he survives. They're able to get the turnaround and get the kill. So good job by Cody. Feels good. You're always kind of skirting death on Janna when you play it. So let's give it over now to Dash and our analysts for more insight on that series tying game. Thank you very much, Riv. Immortals able to strike back there in that game, extending it to a third game for the series. But the story of this game really felt like who he, who he and Stick say against the world here. Yeah, I mean, it started even from the beginning of the game with both uh, Huhi getting a number of kills and, you know, Stixay kind of smashing the bot lane. And it looks like it should be an easy victory coming in for... Uh, CLG before uh, they're, they're just it totally came off the hinges of the team fight phase. Yeah, I think a lot of it came down to the fact that like the front line didn't play well at the back line, especially like Smithy just didn't choose the right times to go in. So if you rewatch a lot of the team fights, it'd take it'll, it'll just be really really poor by him in his decision making to go in. Yeah, of course, who he did pick up quite a few kills in the early game to kind of build that lead and what would be you know, the factor that keeps them in it for as long as they do on the Zed. Right, and Zed's a huge snowball pick, so he gets the initial one for one. That's actually a great trade for Zed, being able to get that kill, get him ahead. He has that nice And then this is a great roam follow off a potential dive coming in that he picks up a double kill on the back line. Right. So overall, who he played the early game extremely well. That's exactly what you need out of the Zed. The problem was uh, they eventually lost a team fight that was pretty critical, and then their, their dragon control was really, really bad, where you're giving up Infernals versus a team that basically everyone is going to want to use it. 
you have so many threats on the side of Immortals. So who say, can it's benefit. rare that a, that a Zed picks up four kills early in the game and then the opposing team picks up two Infernal Dragons in your face, right? You know, it's one of those things where it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense that CLG had the lead they had, it, similar to game one, right? The lead is on a different person, but they have a similar type of lead on a snowball champion who should be able to take over the game. This time they can't close it out, a lot in part because of the disorganized team fights that we saw. Let's take a look at one, 17 and a half. In. This is a four for one in favor of Immortals. And it just opens up with CLG not really being grouped. You don't have your frontliner Maokai there flanking or anything. He's not in position. So Aphromoo goes down right away. Uh, Smithy goes down right away as well. And then Huhi tries to go in, meet up with Darshan, but it's just way too late. And then the fight's already over basically as soon as it started. And this was a contest for that Infernal Drake that you still see up on the map now. Immortals will go and pick that up. They were the ones in position for the Drake first. CLG was trying to collapse. Right, I mean, they, they have to go face check rushes, basically, because they don't have vision. They're not there early, and they're not making the other team walk into them and, like, be scared of a Zed flank. They, they're, they were just late to a lot of objectives and didn't have good vision for it. Yeah, and I think that was a good example of, like, Immortals just hitting the go button with Sivir and Rengar and being able to pick up, like, the kind of chaotic team fight position that they need to get ahead when they're behind four kills, I think, at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Now if we go all the way to the game winning fight, as this game did go up to that 50 minute mark, let's take a look here. Immortals once again coming out on top. Right, it starts out with uh, some pretty good frontlining by Darshan, but it's just so hard for Smithy to find a time to go in. Stixa plays this fight well, but who he, he goes in and just has to go out right away. His build was not super high damage. Uh, he had a GA and hysterics at this point. So, I mean, I think the Zed needs to be looking to trade one for one with a backline threat as opposed to just throw some damage in there because it's really hard to win the team fight. And then once once you're kind of diving, uh, Kazix and Zed can't get anything done. It's super hard to win the team from there. Scar, I know you were suggesting perhaps a Titanic Hydra coming in there in place of the GA. Yeah, one of the more famous uh, Zed players in North America uses Sterix Titanic as a kind of mix between tanky stats plus uh, additional damage source. I think I would have preferred at least one more damage item rather than him going Sterix GA because if you look at their entire team comp, they have three physical AD threats and he really needs to find a way to just punch through the backline because he is a lot of their damage. Kazakhs is not really a damage threat in a lot of these fights. Right, once again, we saw in that gold graph there, probably roughly a 3K gold lead before around that 15 minute mark for CLG. So it's not the two and a half K gold lead at six minutes, but that's a substantial advantage that a team like CLG with the veteran roster that they have, you would expect them to be able to close this one out. It doesn't come together here. So where are we pointing the blame in particular? I know we talked about the front line a little bit, but what aspects of the game were falling apart? I think, well, there's there's one big problem for me, which was how Smithy was playing out the team fights. Uh, a number of times his target selection wasn't very good where he wasn't going back to to his, his back line when they needed the help, or he would jump in right away, which is exactly what Janna wants. She wants to reset that fight off your first attempt. And one of the great things about Kazix is he has ways to contribute to a fight without jumping in. And it felt like every time he jumped in, his, his jump was blown. He either got tornadoed, he got ulted out, and then after that, he's just a Kazix running around with nothing to do. I felt like they had a good team comp to deal with Janna, too. If you look at their team comp, they have Kazix and Zed. Zed is not a necessarily all in champion. He can poke very well, especially with Kazix. So when you look at the team comp, it's like, how do you beat Janna? She, you only beat her with poke, and they had the tools to do it, but they just started fights in really, really strange ways. Like, Smithy, again, would just jump in at random times and just kill himself, or ha he'd have to disengage so quickly that he wouldn't be able to do anything. And if we got to talk about a player on Immortals, it's going to be Flame. Oh, yeah. He is the reason why they were able to come back in this game. His Rumble play, the ultimates in particular, on point. Yeah, I mean, basically any time that you saw a fight go well for Immortals, and even the ones that they were losing, you would just see this perfect rumble ult that would crush people. And that initial dive where Huki got that double kill, it looked really bad. Mm -hmm. The entire team focused Flame, actually. And <laughs> yep. he was like 1v3 under a turret, kind of, and still traded the kill back. So just throughout the entire game, he was playing really well. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I I had questions about Flame's like consistency before this game. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he's still going to be a consistent threat or not, but at least this specific uh, swung almost every single. I think they had to swing mid lane to get back into the lead in the the Baron fight that they that he had a great ulti. Uh, everything essentially was off Flames ulti. His rumble got Immortals to this point in the game where Sivir Janna became just you know astronomically effective, right? Because you get to that point where the ricochets are hitting the team and you've got plenty of protection for your carries. Immortals comes away with the victory here. We're going to game three. Meet us back here to see if Immortals can, or rather CLG, can take the match. Don't touch that browser. Orlando, dude. Sap, dude. My bad, never mind. If you want to say something to me, you can. <laughs> you big fan? You Darshan fan? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's already pulling nah, this up already. Oh. 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 
On the hunt, throws it on. Afro who goes down that time didn't have the exhaust or flaps. This is Immortals working off knowing those summoners were down last time. Oh, they're starting, they're starting, they're starting. It's gone, it's gone. Is it? I'm ulting. I got it. Back up, back up, back up. In his life, and a huge last shot coming in from Stixay. Is there a deadly flurry? Oh, the bounce! Over to it, small no. Cody Sun will be the one to get here. He's a lot of the damage. Pole belts are as Eight well. Seconds on Seven Stixay. seconds on Stixay now. Next is open. We're going to game three, 25 to eight.